Tell us your name and where are you from? Araceli in Tri-Cities. Araceli, how did you end up coming to Hunger Generation? And when you came, what were your thoughts? So I was invited by my beautiful sister, Yesenia. And when I came in, um, I was really nervous, um, scared. But everybody was really nice, warm-hearted, and gave lots of hugs. Um, can you tell us, what was that event that was happening in your life that drew you closer to God? Um, okay. So I went through a breakup. I was in a relationship for 10 years. Um, and I went through a really big breakup. I got into a really bad depression, um, anxiety. I ended up just not being able to sleep. Every day I cried. Um, I ended up in the hospital just from not eating, um, just waking up, literally shutting myself from others, going to my mom's and crying. Um, I just, it wasn't me. Like, I literally, I couldn't do anything but cry and just sit in the, in the couch and think about how my life was just apart, falling apart, and I was no one. How long you were you crying periods for? The depression started right after my breakup, and it lasted about two and a half months to almost three months. And how has um, that affected your life? Um, it affected my life huge. I mean, like I said, I wasn't able to eat. I had a daughter who I could barely put a smile on my face and pretend like everything was okay, and I didn't want to show my emotions, my pain. So I try to hide it. Um, friends, I stopped talking to everyone. I shut everyone out of my life. The only person I had was family who would have to literally call me every single day and tell me, everything's okay, how are you? I mean, from right when I woke up, making sure that I was literally still alive and good and telling me, hey, today's a new day. You can put a smile on your face. You could do this. Um, and then what happened? Um, you came to the conference. What happened at the conference here? So uh, I, when I first came to church, I was still in a relationship. And um, my sister invited me. I think she was getting baptized. And so I came, and I seen her get baptized, and I was happy for her. And I thought, okay, good for her. You know, this is not my thing. I'm happy for her. I hope everything goes well. Um, after my breakup, like I said, I went I mean, depressed, anxiety, not eating, just totally changed, anger. Uh, my sister invited me over and said, hey, we're having a huge conference. Come over, it's at church. Um, and I thought to myself, no, I'll just stay home. I feel like crying today. <laughs> and my sister said, no, you're coming. I mean, she demanded me. She's like, I'm going to go pick you up. And she did. I think she followed me here. And she brought me and she sat me down and... For the first time in my whole entire life, during worship, I've always been a person I'm private. I don't like to cry in front of people. If I do, I shut it up and I suck it up and try to change the subject. I was listening to worship and the song was playing. And I could just remember the lyrics and the, the girl singing. And I felt like everything was okay. I f literally fell to my knees and I remember holding my sister I was holding, I was on my knees and I was hugging her and I was crying and she kept telling me everything's okay, everything's fine. But for the first time ever, I didn't care who was watching. I didn't care how loud I was crying and I was crying loud. I mean, my tears were just running and something literally told me everything's gonna be fine. You're gonna come out of this stronger and better than ever. And as I'm holding my sister crying, I feel like, oh my gosh, I like snap out of it. And I look around and I think, oh, how many people seen me? And I run, I get out of the church and I drive to my mom's house. And then after that, I drive home. And I mean, a million things are going through my head. I'm literally feeling worthless. Like something's telling me you're worthless, you're ugly. He left you because you're ugly, you're dumb. You know, you need to end this. You're, you can't do this anymore. And I remember looking into my cabinet and I just thought in my head, just take a whole bunch of pills. Nobody will ever know. The world's happier without you and you'll end your suffering. And then as that second that I open up the cabinet and I look, something again, the peace comes all over my body and tells me, no, you are strong. You're going to do this and you're gonna be okay. 
And I shut it, and that's when my sister calls me, and she's, of course, angry. She's like, where are you at? Why did you leave? Um, Pastor Vlad is here, and he's, he's ready to give his speech. And I'm like, um, well, I'm going go to I'm gonna take a nap, just making up excuses, just basically not to come back. And she said, no, he's looking for you. He, he wants you back. And I said, oh, man, I'm going to look bad. <laughs> so I hurry up and run back to my car, and I drive back to church. And I sit through the whole conference. I literally come, I think it was a three-day, three-day. Um, I come every single day. And literally after that, I felt a peace. I felt amazing. Um, like I knew I could do it. I didn't need anyone or anything. All I needed was God. And still, I, I mean, half was good and the other half was kind of bad. I couldn't go home. I couldn't be home for an hour. I couldn't, I mean, I have this house, four bedrooms, and I couldn't even, I would literally go from room to room to living room to bathroom, and I couldn't even be home because I felt so alone. I felt like this box of memories was attacking me. So I literally would go home, shower, change, go to friends, more mainly my moms and sisters. And the only time I was home was basically to sleep, and that's it. And I woke up and left. So it was just basically changing, shower, and leave. And I wouldn't even eat at home. Can you tell us what happened after the conference? Um, how did you find solution? After the conference, I started noticing that I didn't want to be home. Like, it, something was literally biting me being home. Like, I felt so uncomfortable. I called Pastor Vlad, and I asked him to come, if I could talk to him at my home, and he can come check it out, basically, like, what's going on? Like, why can't I be home? And that's when Pastor Vlad um, and Lilia and Martin um, came over, and I remember just pulling up and seeing them outside, and I said, oh, man, they, they need three guys to come help me. And I was so embarrassed. I, didn't, I went in there, and they just started talking to me, and they kind of looked around the house, and in the house I have a saint, and he was given to me by family um, from my in-laws when they went to Mexico. And this saint, I was told to put it in the door. So basically, when everyone comes in, it kind of, I think, blesses everyone as they come in. And if anybody who's bad, you can't come in my house, which I don't, I don't know how that works. But, and also I had two statues who I had no clue. I knew their names, and they were saints. And like I know Catholic people usually really, they pray to them, but I never knew what the purpose was of them, but I had them there because it was a gift. So what was the sticker of the saint did at, at your house? So the saint... What was the purpose for your mother-in-law to give it to you? She gave it to me just kind of like a souvenir. It was a gift from Mexico, I think. She said, oh, I'll bring it back to protect you and your family and the house. And so, yeah, I nailed it on top of my door, and, I, and every day it's, I would look at it. I mean, I read it. And I would look at it every day, and I kind of started. I was never Catholic, and I never believed in the saints and stuff, but I noticed myself as I would walk out every day, I would look at it and say, okay, take care of me today. Or I would just kind of like say a little quick prayer as I left and look at it and then leave to work or wherever I went. What happened um, after they prayed for your house and you tossed those saints away? So after they prayed for me... um, I threw away the saints and the sticker. I really didn't feel bad because I didn't really like them to begin with. I didn't think they were cute. (laughs) So I threw them away, didn't miss them. I started slowly, I mean, not right away, slowly kind of feeling at home again. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I could be there more than an hour. I started cooking. I started having friends over my house, kind of, you know, spending more time home, redecorating, um, just kind of making it feel homier. And then how your life began to change afterwards? My life, basically, it's amazing how it took, I mean, I think God and my sister for bringing me here for that conference that it literally touched me. Um, My life, I'm now engaged with the same person who we had a big breakup with and planning my wedding. And not only God did he bring him back, he brought him back better. And he's filled my life with just nothing but better. Like, 
I don't, there's no way that I could explain how empty I felt, how I idolized my boyfriend. I idolized things more than God in the past. And I feel like God showed me that there's only one God and he's the person I need to idolize. And after going through what I went and after coming to the conference, putting God first proved to me that he is the best. And no matter what, not like boyfriends, not like anything, they could leave. He will never leave me. And he proved to me that he'll always be here with me. And what is your advice that you want to tell us tonight? So my advice is don't idolize your boyfriend. Don't idolize an item. Don't make anything, anyone, your everything. Because once they're gone, you literally feel like dying without them. But idolizing God, the person that will be there, the God who's with you no matter what. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Thank you.